All right, everybody, welcome to podcast number three, The Iron Road Way. We got an incredible special guest with us today, the one and only Cody O'Connor. He's got an amazing story he's going to share with us, and uh, it will absolutely inspire you, make you want to get involved, and make a difference like he's doing at a very young age. Uh, but he was faced with some circumstances that most people at his age don't ever have to face, and uh, he is all about overcoming. So the title of our web, an our, an webinar, what am I talking about? Our <laughs> podcast today is uh, How We Overcome. And, uh, oh man, you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to bust out a song. Check this out. <laughs> because everybody falls down. I don't know if people even do this in podcasts, but we do here because it's the Iron Road way. So check this out. He's feeling good. The neighborhood. Come on, Cody. Feeling blessed, never stressed, never stressed. Got that sunshine on my Sunday best. best. What? Some days you wake up and nothing works. You feel surrounded. You feel surrounded. Always. Get you grounded. Stay grounded. Come on, come on, Cody. Here we go. This is a, this is Cody's song. He doesn't know it yet. This is his song. Everyone down sometimes so this that's what it is everyone falls down sometimes today's podcast is about falling down getting up and overcoming cody welcome buddy thank you thanks for having me oh my gosh so glad you're here can't wait to hear your story so tell us a little bit uh you were a freshman in high school freshman in high school freshman in high school and you're playing on a i think you were playing varsity soccer at the time is that right I was on a soccer team, not for the high school, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're playing soccer, and you start having some trouble with your calf. Yep. Yeah? And so start there. Yeah. So I felt a pain in my lower right leg. Um, it was actually going on for about a year. and uh, So you're, you're playing through this for a year. Yep. Thinking? Well, it was originally diagnosed as Achilles tendonitis. Oh, wow. So I thought that it was a very... Uh, normal thing. Yeah. I was very active. Yeah. I, I didn't stop working out yeah. and stay off my feet properly. Yeah. So a lot of it had to do with uh, what I thought was just can you know not proper rest. Yeah. So um, and after a while, um, it stayed on. It was like rough growing pains. Like there were sometimes I couldn't walk. I was popping like eight Advil a night to well, sleep. Well, but you're, you're 14 years old, f- right. 15 years right. old. You're thinking, yeah. yeah, you're you're still growing. Right. Right. And. Uh, it, and I got back from camping one day and, uh, my dad and I talked actually at the campsite uh-huh. saying how, Hey, I have a break between wrestling. You know, I was like this, this will be my break and we can go and get it all done. Yeah. Uh, get, Meaning, it, checked, get it checked out like yeah. again and see, you know what we can do. We're not thinking mm-hmm. anything crazy. And then, uh, when I got home, he dropped me off at my mom's house and, uh, she gave me that look, you're not going to school tomorrow. You're going to the doctor. And, um, she was like, I don't care what you and your dad say. Mm-hmm. So and, She uh, knew at this point, this has been too long. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to get it checked out. Yeah, I mean, uh, she looked at my ankle when I had shorts on and saw one was double or triple the size of the other. And she was like, mm-mm. And at yeah. that point, you're still active. You're still playing soccer. You're yep. still. Soccer, yeah. wrestling, I said you got a couple. Everything. Yeah, you got a yep. couple screws loose, bro. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you had, and at that point, you're thinking you're dealing with something you know, muscular, tendon, something right. like that. So mom says, she draws the line. She says, we're going to the doctor. What happens next? Uh, so we end up with a, um, a doctor feels the leg and says, I've never felt anything like this. Wow. And Are you uh, at an orthopedic? No, I was at a, just a pediatrician. Oh, wow. And uh, he orders an x-ray right away. I asked to see the x-ray because I'm at that point, I wanted to be a doctor and I was very inquisitive Mm -hmm. and uh, he showed swelling on the fibula. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was like, I don't think your bones, your bones swollen. Yeah. I was like, I don't think bones are supposed to swell. Um, That night we get a call. I'm in an MRI the next morning. Uh, I remember asking the MRI tech if I could see the image again, like I did for the x-ray at 15, Uh, 14. Yeah. And he told me, he was like, I can't say anything. And I just remember seeing this big glowing blob and I walked out of there before everybody saying, you don't have to say a word because I already knew at that point, that's not good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. did you have in your mind at that time that you thought it might be cancer? I knew it was cancer at that time. You knew it. As soon as I saw the glow. Yeah. uh, It's, 
it was too big mm-hmm. not to be. Uh, then mm-hmm. in my mind, I started, uh, I, I'll use the word falsely praying. I mean, I was praying, but mm-hmm. um, I'll say falsely because it, something that big, the odds of it being benign mm-hmm. are absolutely small. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It, it was very, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I... I uh, and you had all that going through your mind. I mean, you're oh, yeah. 14 years old and you're able to process at that point. This is probably not benign. This is cancer, I'm sure of it, based on what you were looking at with the MRI. And right. And so, like most of us, when we're faced with something where we feel out of control, you're like, oh, I better pray. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, after after that, I mean, I remember, you know, breaking down in the uh, school when mm-hmm. uh, my dad came to pick me up for the uh, another oncology appointment. Mm. Um, and uh, This is the day after. A uh, couple days after, yeah. Okay. Because we had... Uh, so you're in school, you're walking around, yeah. doing your thing in classes, knowing, mm-hmm. at least pretty, pretty confident in your mind, that you're walking around with cancer. Right. Wow. Yep. Can't imagine it. Yeah, and, um, you know, everybody ca- always says the word, don't put the cart in front of the horse. Mm-hmm. Well, after you see it, it's already in motion, right? So it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, that's well said. Man, I mean, this story is so unbelievable, and there are millions and millions of kids out there right now. And we'll get into talking about later how you're trying to touch those kids. But first of all, thanks for being willing to share this. I mean, just the fact that you're willing to share what you went through. And I know your heart's desire is to share it so that you can impact somebody else and impact their ability to manage through it psychologically. Right. Even. And then talk a little bit about spiritually how you have have leveraged your spirituality to be able to help you walk through it. Right. And so, so okay, so you take us through that. So what happens next? Your dad comes, you head to the oncologist, you find out at that point, you know, you hear it probably for the first time, yes, this is cancer, and they tell you the type of cancer and prognosis, and what, so, do, what do you go through the next right. few uh, days? They tell me it's a tumor. They don't know themselves. I think in the back of their head they knew a little bit. But they tell me it's a tumor. Mm-hmm. Uh, they say the next st- uh, step is a biopsy. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, then after the biopsy, we'll have a PET scan, make sure it's not anywhere else in the body, mm-hmm. and kind of kind of go in that direction. All I remember is pleading, because my soccer team never made it to state, and it was my first year with this team. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't played soccer in a little bit, and they awarded me captain. And I was like, I have to be there for this game yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. Well, they end up letting me. And then after he cuts into me on Monday for wait the biopsy. Minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You went and played the game? Yeah. And got my team to state. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. So, and then, <laughs> then he's cutting, the surgeon cuts into my leg. And as soon as he cuts into my leg and after, you know, I'm, I'm out, he goes to the surgeon or the room where my parents are waiting and tells them, exactly what type of tumor it is, what's in front of us, you know, X, Y, you know, A leads to B. And, and he's like, this is what you're fighting. Wow. He's like, I should have never let him play soccer because mm-hmm. the way that it encompassed my uh, fibula. Mm-hmm. Should have broken, was, probably. Yes. If that was to break, it, tumors are so vascular that I would have bled out internally. Wow. And uh, so he was like, if I would have known this, he would have never played. But you know, we're here. Yeah, Someone 20, protected 20, me. 2020, you right. got through it. Yeah. Right. Yep. The Lord allowed you to, it wasn't your time. Right. Yeah. So you get prognosis at that point and you start with treatments. Yeah. After the biopsy, we'll probably say it was another week. And then it was port placement, marrow uh, test or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was receiving chemo that night. Mm-hmm. So this all probably happened in a week and a half ish, mm-hmm. two weeks tops. Mm-hmm. So how long did you go through chemo? 10 months. 10 months of chemotherapy. <laughs> that was the prescription. And I was very blessed that we stuck to the script. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that they can't, their body can't handle it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, can't only, I can only imagine the, you know, the impact of chemo. You know, so you're fighting that for 10 months. And yeah. you get through the 10 months. Uh, and prognosis prior to going through the chemo was it was it good uh i mean i they i was given the statistic it was like 72 or 78 percent chance of survival Mm -hmm. which i thought that was like oh it's a shoe in we're we're gonna survive Mm -hmm. um it's isn't it amazing attitude is 
Yeah. It's, it's everything. It is a lot. It is completely it's, oh a lot. My, I mean, God is in control. Yep. But he allows us to uh, choose. Right you know, how we're going to face things. Yep. And I know he wants us to be trusting in him, but your attitude is so positive. Yeah, and that, the crazy thing about it is I was positive throughout the majority of it, mm -hmm. but in the beginning, like, there's a polarizing change that I undergo. Mm -hmm. um, so you have, I was, I had four months of chemo, and then I had a month break because I was going through surgery. Mm -hmm. And at that point, so in those four months, I was kind of, I guess, fighting the fact that I came down with cancer mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, I still was going to the movies. I was still, you know, I was trying not to go through blood transfusions. Are I mean, you sharing it with your friends at that point? Are you talking? Oh, yeah, they all know. Everybody all know. knows. Everybody. And what was that like? So for kids out there that are in the same boat that you're in right now, what was that like? I mean, is, is would, you, would you say sharing it was a good thing? I mean, I would think there are some kids that are out there that, you know, don't want to don't want to get that out. They're afraid of how people treat them. Will they start treating them, you know, differently than they did before? And you just want to be treated as Cody. What, I mean, what would you say? What would your, you know, expressing it the first time, um, everybody's shocked no yeah. matter what, no yeah. matter who you are, you're what 14 you've gone years through, old, right? It's yeah. not supposed to happen to a 14 year old or so you believe <laughs> growing up, right? You mm -hmm. know, this is something that you should face when you're an adult. And, um, however, you need those people, you need those people. Mm -hmm. You can't do, you can't fight it alone. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do it. Yeah. You had to grow, you had to draw on their strength. Yep. You, yeah. you, I needed, like I had four best friends that were near around me mm -hmm. every day, basically. Mm. Amazing. Spe when I was home. What a blessing. Know? It was, it is. And true. I want to remind me if I forget about it, let's talk about those four friends and other people that you shared it with and how that's impacted now. Let's say, how old are you today? 23. 23. So we're almost 10 years, a decade later. It'll mm -hmm. be interesting to talk about what those friendships with all those people that right. walk through that with you are like today. Because yeah. that'll be important for people that right. are 14 years old facing the same thing that you're facing right now to be able to look at 10 mm -hmm. years down the road. What's, what's this look like? You yeah. know? Yeah. 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 But back to those four months, right? Yep. That... I, I, I was kind of fighting cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, I fought cancer, but I was fighting the fact that I had it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I lost only the head on my, or the hair on my top of my head. Mm -hmm. Still had my eyebrows, still had everything. So mm -hmm. walking around, I looked like a fit, bald guy. That's yeah. all I look like. Yep. Nobody could tell yet. Which today, you, could, you know, I mean, a lot of, a lot right. of people wear their hair like yep. that, you know, especially yep. when you wrestle and right. Are, Tough guys like you are. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So when going through that that month break, I just had a feeling it was going to hit me different. Uh, it's kind of like when you stop working out and then you mm. go back that first day. Mm -hmm. And then the next day you wake up, you're like, oh, gosh, every yeah, muscle in everything my body. Hurts. Yes. So something it, inside you told you it was going to be different next right, time around. Right. And sure enough, I go through the surgery. Everything goes well with that. And I go in for chemo mm -hmm. and uh, we go home like we always do. Mm -hmm. And I wake up and uh, I do this the next morning, just rubbing, just rubbing my head. Mm -hmm. And I see eyebrows on my fingertips. Mm. Well, I go to the, the bathroom and I just immediately start scrubbing my eyebrows, trying to get all the hairs out because kind of hurt yeah <laughs> it kind of uh, losing hair does not feel good when yeah. you're going through chemo because mm -hmm. everything is just it's sensitive yeah so i was just trying to get everything off and then i just remember th it was polarizing i looked in the mirror and i was like for the first time i'm a cancer patient wow and i i told uh from that moment I, I was like lord do what you need to do i need i want to survive Wow. So I transfusions, I was getting premedicated. I was getting blood before I left the hospital, blood after mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. stopping everything that whatever mm -hmm. I had to do, I was mm -hmm. doing it by the book after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's interesting because yeah. you said, you said two things there. You said, Lord, do whatever you have to do. And yet in the same breath, you were going to do everything you were told to do so that you did your part. Right. You didn't just say, Lord, heal me. I'm not going to do chemo. Right. And, you know, that's a that's a big theological 
question we can get into because God's going to do what God wants to do when God wants to do it. Right. But your choice at that time was, I'm going to control what I can control, and the rest is up to you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And, and and I felt like, had I not chosen to do that, mm-hmm. I don't know if my body beats it the way that it did. Mm-hmm. Um, when they resected my tumor, uh, one cell was a millimeter next to the margins. Well, that's the cutoff. So it's kind of really interesting when I start looking back. It's like, had I remained like that, mm-hmm. would it would I have been okay, you mm-hmm. know, or was the attitude beginning to change and therefore everything came together, mm-hmm. you know? Wow. That's, that is a, a really beautiful thing to be able to pass on to people that are dealing with the same thing right now. You know, not that one size fits all, but yeah. for Cody O'Connor, here's, here's what worked for me. Right. And here's going after going through this, you know, one in a million, or I don't know how many million experience, Here's what I can share with you. And that's, that's, that's critical to yeah. get that story out because you're one in a million or how, who knows? For Do sure. you know? Do you know how many kids at 14 years old end up with that type of tumor? Uh, at the time I was told 400. 400 million? No, four, 400 kids in oh. America come down with that cancer. Yeah. And um, I think that so, number's inflated a little bit now, but. So 400 out of 300 million. <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah. something crazy well yeah. i mean there's about yeah. 300 million people roughly right. and right living in our country that's it's an amazing so man what a what a platform you've got to make an impact right so so fast forward a little bit okay you get through 10 months of chemo and at what point do you know that you've beat this thing by the grace of god i kind of and it, it, it sounds so hokey, but I kind of knew as soon as I started that I was going to do this. Wow. So it, it sounds like... You really, you really knew that? I believed it, yes. Mm-hmm. I, um, because as soon as, I, as soon as I started, I started you know, praying twice a day every day, and I still do that. Mm. Um, I just felt... Like you limited it twice a day, or... No, I, at least twice. Like I pray when I wake up and right before I go to bed. Uh-huh. That's kind of just one and of my habits. And was that different than what you did before? Right, right. I it prayed was. periodically before. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it really heightened that. And that being one of the big things, I just felt like, and it could have been just my competitive nature, mm-hmm. but I felt like as soon as I knew this, I looked, I remember chemo's going into my body and I look at my dad and say, I'm gonna be all right. And I, so when did I beat it? I think as soon as I knew that I had it. Mm-hmm. Um, so let me ask that, that's, that's incredible. But there are people out there, you talk about DNA. That's mm-hmm. the way you're made. There are people right. out there that struggle with all kinds of things, anxiety, depression. Right. They want to overcome it up here. Mm-hmm. But science will tell us that they don't have as much serotonin. Or, right. And it's, they can't will themselves to it. So, right. so if Billy is in the same place at 14 and I can't will myself to that, you know, I don't need to beat myself up about that. No. You know, because, because truly... You know, you were assured that God was in control at that point. Would you say that you got to a point where you felt like, I mean, I know you had confidence in yourself. I know you were determined to beat it and you believed it. But what kind of confidence did you pull from your faith, you know, if you didn't believe? Were you able to entrust that to a higher power? I I was. At least personally, I was, because I think that is where a lot of the confidence came from, because I kind of turned it over. Okay. And I kind of just was like, this is what I, what it is. Yeah. And, um, and it was kind of one of those things where, you know, it, this won't be fixed by me going to the gym twice a day, every day. Yeah. Right? This won't yeah. be fixed by, you know, uh, do I show up to class or not? You know, yeah. this can't be fixed by extra studying hours. It's not what it's, I'm going to do. Right. Right. It truly is in the hands of God. So it, yeah. it, it, you, you can't control it. Yeah. There's. But you believed. I did. Yeah. I really did. I, I um, So medically, when did you get cleared? Uh, in August-ish of um, 10, mo- 10 months after diagnosis. So, okay. Yeah. So August, and I can't imagine what that was like. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're celebrating with family, with friends. And before I forget this, it was pretty critical. You had a grandparent or grandparents that played a critical role for you. And this is important because this is going to be important as we talk about your foundation in a few minutes. Right. Um, 
because your family financially, you guys, this puts you in harm's way. I mean, you guys were struggling financially. We were. Parents couldn't take off work mm-hmm. to go and be with you while you have these treatments. Right. And it really became the impetus for what you're doing today. So tell us just a little bit about that. What was that like? Because I can't imagine how many kids are in the same boat. Right. So, you know, you have, I'm the oldest of seven. Uh, my mom, I'll, I'll focus on my mom. And she was the, she's the mother of three children. Mm-hmm. And at the time of diagnosis, she's going through a divorce. Mm-hmm. Well, on a medical assistant salary in Westchester, that's not gonna mm-hmm. that's not gonna work. So uh, we yeah we were faced with things like losing our house, where mm-hmm. food was coming from, you know, and, uh, and you know she worried about Santa Claus, you know. Mm-hmm. So we all ended up um, being blessed that we only struggled for a couple months because you know our grand my grandparents took me in, uh, mm-hmm. took us in. Uh, the Lakota School District donated all of our presents and. Um, our church donated meals Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for about 30 weeks-ish. Wow. Wow. So the, What church? Uh, St. Michael's in Sharonville. Way to go, St. Michael's. Yeah. And uh, it, it was just it, knowing that that's not what everybody has. Mm-hmm. And there's so many people and families that go through this. Mm-hmm. It, it really just it mm-hmm. made, made me want to be like, I don't. they don't need to go through that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, because you can't imagine right. having to go through that without that help, right? From the from the district, right. Lakota, from St. Michael's, yep. you know, from your grandparents, right? Who, because your parents couldn't go with you to the chemo treatments, went with you, right? Yeah, my uh, grandpa was <laughs> he was like my chauffeur, you know, it was yeah. every appointment. Uh, he didn't stay the night, uh, not that he wouldn't have, but my mom or whoever took turns mm-hmm. trying to get down there at night. But my grandpa gran- stepped in. Oh, he was there for what's me. your grandpa's name? Don. Don, way to go, Grandpa! Yeah, he uh, he was the he was literally over twelve hours a day, whatever, until yeah. people got there. He was there every day. That's a, that's so, amazing. Yeah, he was awesome. So you go through this, you get a cleared by the grace of God medically, and you decide at what point that you're going to start giving back because right now. Uh, you've started a foundation called Champions Overcome, and Champions Overcome really wants to help empower kids right. that were in the same situation you were in. Right. So when do you make that decision? Tell us a little bit about Champions Overcome, and then I can't wait to ask you about this tour you've been on because you've been going <laughs> all around the world, man. Champions Overcome, we took on, uh, hey, we took on the Big Apple. Yep. I mean, we fell down a couple of times, but we're getting up, man. God's providing. Yes. Watch yes, out, baby. Amen. Champions are amen. overcoming, and we're getting ready to overcome with a, with about, I don't know how many. We're getting ready to make this happen. Amen. Here amen. we come, kids. We're coming. There's a lot of great organizations out there, but there's not enough of them, so we're going to be one more. We're right. not competing. We're just adding to the blessings. Right. So tell us about it. So the idea came to me actually receiving chemo Mm -hmm. because I saw the focus being taken off of my family Mm -hmm. or my siblings and I'm a family man and I feel like it was always my job or position to to lead the way for them and now it was they are left behind kind of you know so we wanted to provide extracurricular payments and, and transportation and food to make sure that the siblings were taken care of I wanted to start it in high school after I beat it and realized that there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of money that goes into actually starting it. Uh, Coming from that, I went, you know, went through college, went, you know, part of college and got my real estate license, was able to sell some homes. I banked up enough money to pursue this dream. Mm -hmm. Business coach kind of kicked me off the edge Mm -hmm. and, um, kicked you off the edge like he didn't want to have anything to do with you or no he kicked gave like, you the idea he he gave me the nudge i he saw how much i light up when yeah. i started talking about it yeah your passion and he was like you need to do this yeah and gave me that extra push who's your business coach uh steve oiler hey steve way to go brother i'm trying to tell my daughter the same thing right now now her thing is not champions overcoming it's clothes but she lights up yeah cc <laughs> Go do clothes, girl. People are going to buy it. All right, go ahead. 
it, with that, it morphed into what it is today. And that's not only taking care of the siblings of that patient, but paying mortgages, utilities, mm -hmm. rent, uh, gas, food, insurance, sending the parents on date nights because the divorce rate, not only in America, is absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm. But when you go through traumatic situations, it's even worse. Mm -hmm. And also sending the family on a small staycation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's really, we're really building up that family unit Mm -hmm. So that they can, you know, fight this battle with a new faith filled, love filled, mm -hmm. you know, hope filled fight, mm -hmm. making sure that no kid is left by themselves mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So that is, aw I mean, there's a gap, right? There is a gap. You guys are going to stand in the gap. Right. And you want to provide for the financial needs of families that were in the same situation that you were in. Right. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about this tour you've been doing to, to make that happen. What are the next big th big things coming up so that people know how to support, how to get behind this? Because um, your story is incredible. Your passion is real. You are driven. I, th I truly believe that you believe you're going to make this happen, and they're going to be um, who knows how many. I was going to say thousands, maybe millions of families that are impacted um, by your experience, by the grace of God, for his honor and glory. So talk to us about your tour. Talk to us about how people can help stand in the gap, whether it's a dollar or $10 million, to help fund families that need the help that your family needed. Yes, yeah, starting we have, I, like I said, you, you said I was up, up in the Big Apple, and we... Uh, <laughs> We set up a few fundraisers up there. Uh, we're doing an interview series right now with a mm -hmm. bunch of people in the community that have overcome anything, mm -hmm. trying to be that ray mm -hmm. of hope, that uh, positive light on social yep. media. Yeah. Uh, so you're spreading the word. Right. Spreading yep. the word. And, and that's that's people that have fought, you know, child death and, uh, you know, breaking a glass ceiling that they never thought they could, mm -hmm. as well as cancer and illnesses mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're really trying to publish that and pub push all of that so that people have a positive area to turn to. Mm -hmm. um, so up in New York, we started a couple fundraisers, um, networked a lot. Uh, so we're taking things there. Down in Miami, we networked with a few people down there to where we're doing like toy drives and various fundraisers down there to spread the brand and everything mm -hmm. down in the Miami region. Mm -hmm. uh, on the horizon, we have Iowa and Charleston, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then drawing it all the way back here, you know, for everybody that wants to get involved here in the Cincinnati area or anywhere, really. Mm -hmm. uh, on our website, championsdoovercome.org, you can find our, uh, our PayPal link to donate. Um, you know, we have various events coming up. Follow mm -hmm. us on Facebook for, to stay up to date with that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you can follow my personal Instagram, Cody underscore O'Connor 15, and that's where Everything is posted behind the scenes. Things are posted to show the day to day, mm -hmm. uh, how a nonprofit's built mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually all the work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and so, uh, any big fundraisers coming up here in the Cincinnati area to talk about, are there, do you have anything planned? Yeah. So we starting out, I mean, we have a, it's a little late now, but golf outing on Sunday. Okay. Uh, and that's we're we're, we're really excited for that first one. Yep. Then we have a high school dance going on. Uh, that's going to be in September. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be at Skate Town USA in Westchester. Okay. Uh, they're partnered with us, and we're going to throw a big mixer. Um, and then I'm going to – the biggest – next biggest one to talk about is I'm going to be walking from Westchester all the way down to the banks of Cincinnati. Oh, wow. Yeah. We're calling it a walk for hope. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really just stems from the idea that I was told going through cancer – and after that, I would never walk again without a brace, that I would never run again, that I would never play sports again. Mm -hmm. And the Lord's blessed me to where I haven't wore a brace in four years. I was cleared to run around in a track on flat ground a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. It's kind of uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I box and lift all the time. Yeah. So, of course, we're doing it for donations and things. Sure. But more or less, or more, more than that, we're doing it for that story to reach somebody else that's mm -hmm. fighting that common depression that's not talked about after mm -hmm. cancer mm -hmm. so. cody i'm so proud of you man it's a uh, you know i hate what you had to go through and anybody that's going through something so traumatic you know we y y you hate it but when you see people come through it and you see people look back and say how can i make that easier for somebody else that's inspiring 
So proud of you. Thanks for sharing your story. Thank you. Um, look forward. Iron Road is excited about coming alongside of you and helping make an impact for kids and families uh, in our community to start with. Definitely. And uh, we're excited about what God's going to do through you and through this vision that he's given you. Uh, so let's make it happen, man. Let's thanks. do it. Yeah, do thanks, it. thanks for sharing today. Great to be Thank with you, you, buddy. Thank you. All righty.